My project is about uh, trying to do a flipped classroom in a humanities context. I was really excited by it because it gave me an opportunity to make my pedagogy align with my uh, stated goals of what learning about and teaching philosophy is, uh, because it is not a body of settled doctrine that the students are supposed to simply internalize and perhaps admire. It's supposed to be um, a tool for learning and a tool for self-development. And students can only do that if they are actually actively engaged in the classroom as opposed to being the passive recipients of uh, some knowledge from the professor. Uh, the big challenge for people in the humanities is that, of course, there are no clear answers to any of the questions that we investigate. And so it's uh, very challenging to try to identify tasks or activities that the students can perform in class uh, that are directed enough so that they make progress, but do not misrepresent the subject matter so that everything seems to be much more clear cut than it actually is. So I've always been really interested in the idea of a flipped classroom in the humanities uh, because this is certainly true in philosophy, but I imagine that this is true of other humanities fields as well. We do not want the students to simply be passive recipients of settled knowledge or to simply think of what we can convey to them as a number of doctrines that they can uh, repeat back to us. Instead, we want these materials to be things and artifacts that they can engage with actively to shape their own thinking and to develop as uh, thinkers in their own right. But of course, it's very hard to do this um, if the students aren't actively engaged in the classroom. So I've always been very excited about this very general idea, but um, I've always also been very scared of uh, trying to implement it in the, in the classroom because in the humanities, our questions don't have clear-cut answers which makes it very hard to generate activities that students can pursue in a classroom, get feedback on, and still not misrepresent our fields as being much more clear cut or much more simple minded than they actually are. Uh, the Hilt Grant gave me an opportunity to pursue a pedagogical strategy that I learned about at a conference and thought had a lot of potential, but I couldn't quite see how to implement it in my class. Um, so with the funds that Hilt gave me, I was able to go to some training workshops um, that allowed me to look in detail at how that kind of strategy had been implemented in other areas and at other schools. And it allowed me to hire uh, some graduate students to work with me on developing a course with this methodology. Um, I taught the course that I designed as a flipped classroom twice. I taught it once in the summer school and then I'm just about to finish teaching it for the first time in the college. And going through the course twice in detail with students in the classroom under real conditions was incredibly informative. Uh, it gave me many points for me to focus on moving forward. If I went, not just if, but when I teach this course again next fall, there will be a lot of changes that I'll be able to make because I've gone through the process. The other thing that has gone really well is I've been able to work very closely with some uh, of my graduate students, and that's been great. I also believe that the course on its own terms has been quite successful. Um, students are much more engaged with the course materials. Uh, they report on midterm evaluations, for instance, that the methodology that asks them to perform tasks in class as teams uh, incentivizes them to actually do the readings. Uh, sometimes they say this with a note of surprise. I can also tell just from my own perspective in grading students' papers uh, that their level of understanding is much deeper than it was in past iterations of the course where the students were simply uh, there as uh, an audience for a lecture. One change uh, that I think is absolutely essential is that when students go through a classroom uh, and through a class experience from day to day where the class is broken up into many small parts where the professor might present material for five to ten minutes they perform a task there's a debrief of that task then there's again the professor presenting something else another task another debrief 
it's sometimes hard for students to see exactly what the point of each element of the lecture is. Whereas if a professor simply gives a 53 minute lecture or a 60 or 70 minute lecture, there is a natural arc and a narrative. One of the things that I didn't emphasize enough this time around and that I want to make sure I emphasize next time is always showing the students what the narrative is. What did we learn from this task? Especially given that, as I mentioned before, the tasks th themselves don't issue in clear verdicts on any matter of philosophical importance. Uh, so in general, in philosophy, there's always the question, what are we getting out of this, since we're not settling the issue of what the best way to live is, for instance. And I think this is only exacerbated by this kind of methodology. Correspondingly, if I want to spend time on giving students um, a sense of what the narrative of a single class session or of a module of the course or the course as a whole is, um, it means that something else has to go. And I think even though I try to be very aware of the trade-off between covering in depth and covering a lot of material by exposing students to it, I still think I went too far in trying to cover too much material. Uh, so I sometimes ran out of time. I didn't give enough time uh, to the students or to myself to do this kind of metacognitive work. When I proposed a project to Hilt, there was a certain kind of outcome. Teach a class in a certain way. Um, but one thing that allowed me to make consistent progress on it and to make sure that uh, something would come out of this experience was to stop thinking about the outcome and only focus on the process. And so uh, be totally okay if it turned out, for instance, that in the course of designing the uh, class and redesigning it uh, to be a flipped classroom, if it turned out that that process uh, led to really insuperable difficulties, that itself would be a really interesting result and an important result to share.